Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. Round six of the candidates and what a cracker it was. There was so much going on today, lots of action, very complicated games. I'm going with the game between Jan Nepomnishi and Jan Krzysztof Duda. Going into this round, of course, Nepo half point clear of Caruana. Those two a little bit out, of, out ahead. So a quiet start from Nepo. He's playing Areti. Now, so far we've seen him playing e4, and, and that's a move I kind of associate with him more. So very straightforward. You know, he, he loves attacking, loves the initiative. So, you know, playing a quiet system like the Reti, well, somehow a little bit unexpected. And Duda plays one of the most respected lines against the Reti. Planting the pawn on d5 and playing the bishop out to g4. h3, one can exchange here, that's not such a bad move, uh, but Duda prefers to keep the two bishops. Now one can play with d3 and knight d2 and go, go for e4, but Nepo plays d4, which also has a decent reputation. And here, quite, there's quite a nice system for white, actually. Playing knight d2, and then going rook e1 and e4. That's quite interesting to play, actually. I've, I've done that a few times. But the other way to play this position is just to go c4. c6, just bolstering that pawn in the centre. And here, one can keep the tension, but... And Nepo plays actually in a very aggressive way. He exchanges on d5. Now, you don't, as black, you don't want to play c takes d5 because the knight is misplaced. If the knight's on c6, this is a playable position. But with the knight on d7, not so good. Here, already white has quite a nice initiative in this position. It's just because of that, that knight is misplaced. So the standard way to play is e takes d5. And now knight e5. Well, this is what I mean about, you know, a really straightforward, aggressive way to play by Nepo. So, yeah, he started out with a, a Reti, but, you know, he's giving it the Nepo twist. He's he's playing, you know, in, in a very nice way with a, a very clear strategy, actually. So the knight hits the outpost, and, well, Duda decides, doesn't want to live with that, exchanges off on e5. And now one can play the knight back to d7, but knight e4 has also been seen. Now you see the pawn structure has changed. So white has this group of five pawns on the king's side. Now if white can get these pawns rolling down the board, then that is really nice. Obviously black has nice central position here, but it's less easy to advance those pawns with that bishop cutting through the middle of the board. Knight d2. And here, uh, well, one could support that knight with f5, but there is a problem. You can take... And after this, again, you play f4. And those pawns, you know, can start to roll down the board. And as I said, with the bishop here, it's actually very difficult for, for black to advance these pawns. Let's go back this position. Anyway, after knight d2, Duda exchanged on d2. And here, again, you know, white's plan is, is to roll those pawns. Um, actually, black needs to do something about that very quickly. And, and, I mean, you can see that white is already better developed than black. So that's also a problem. And I think 
you know, Duda just got caught out here. Somehow he's drifted into this position which, well, the computers think that black is okay here. But from a human point of view, uh, black has problems to solve. They're not easy. Uh, it's interesting, Stockfish, uh, one of the latest versions of Stockfish, thinks that queen b6 is an acceptable way to play. Now, that prevents f4, obviously, because of the pin. And after king h1, which, of course, reinstates the threat of, of f4, g4, and trapping the bishop, it advocates castles queenside, which is utterly bonkers to my eyes, because white just gets a huge attack with b4 and you know, a sort of very obvious pawn storm here. Um, it, it sees a way for black to play that, but it's certainly not a human way to play. And if bishop e7, well then, white just plows on with f4. This is incredibly dangerous. So that's why bishop c5 played by Duda, pinning that f pawn. But rook c1 is an excellent move attacking the bishop. If it drops back to b6, that's really the move you want to make, then bishop b4 prevents black from castling. Very unpleasant. Therefore, Duda played queen e7, protecting the bishop, but you know, consigning the queen to menial defense of that bishop is really not what you want to do. You know, it's just, I mean, tactically it feels loose. King h2 from Nepo, very sound, tucking the king away and, of course, preparing the pawn storm. Castles, g4, here we go, and f4. Well, you know, when I looked this up in, in the database, in fact, this position has been reached before in a game by two top players. Peter Svidler, playing white, against... Uh, Sege Karyakin, Vikonze 2018. Nepo must have known this, but Duda, well, he was struggling. You know, it's clear from the amount of time invested that Duda was not familiar with this position. I have no doubt that Nepo was. You know, again, this is World Championship dividends. You know, this is the, the fruits of his preparation coming out now, basically. And this is a difficult position for Black. Here, Duda played h6. Karyakin went f5. That's kind of the belt and braces approach. Okay, I'm just going to stop that pawn on f4. It doesn't, but that there are drawbacks to playing f5. It weakens this diagonal. Um, there is a protected pass pawn on e5 now. This game was eventually drawn, but... Svidler missed excellent opportunities, actually. So it went like this, queen b3. I mean, that's that's a very nice move, actually, looking in these directions. Also looking at the king side. So actually preventing anything here with queen h4, because that queen can always swing across the board. So I'm just, just a little digression here, just for a moment. The game went like this. Um, and here, well... Svidler plunged in like this and then played e4. And this is incredibly dangerous. And Karyakin actually, well, at this point, Svidler cashed in a bit too early. Uh, e6 is already very, very good for white. The combination of, of this bishop and these pawns is, is actually going to be too much for black. I mean, there are other ways to play, but... Um, so I think what I'm saying is f5 does not solve black's problems by any stretch of the imagination. Duda played h6. And Nepo is in his element playing, you know, very natural attacking moves. So he just swings the queen over to the king side. Very nice. Protects the king. Supports the pawns here. Looks down the g-file, so, you know, he's now preparing to push. Bishop h7, preempting f5. Now h4. Pawn storm continues. Queen in, in the perfect position. 
fact, you know, the computer still thinks that black is probably okay here um, after bishop d4. So that's really about, you know, preventing f5. Uh, also looking at the pawn here, but still, I mean, this, it looks very dubious. Um, I mean, one way to play is like this. And the computer thinks that g5 is the way to play. I mean, that's, you, it takes guts to play a move like that. And then king g7, well, you know, maybe you can get away with that. But, you know, the, bishop d4 is all already a slightly odd move. You know, very hard to see that one. A real computer move. Duda played rook d8. And Nepo just hammered on with g5. Pawn exchange. And if bishop f5, then queen h4, for example. And very clear plan, rook h1, king away, and here we go, down the h-file. Duda played bishop b4. Bishop exchange. And f5, so Nepo doesn't need to deviate from his strategy. You know, the pawn storm is coming good. Gives the pawn on b2, but he's crashing through. And now Duda actually plays in the best way. f takes e6, g6, and he just gives up that piece on h7. It wasn't doing much anyway. So now black has a stack of pawns, and in fact, black still has survival chances here. I mean, basically, you know, black is trying to hang on for a draw. Um, the best is to take here and play like this. And let me see. Well, at the moment, black has two pawns for that bishop. This one might drop. And then white just has this one lone pawn, but actually still very, very difficult for black to defend that one. But that's the best that black has. You know, there are survival chances there. But let's come back to the game. Instead, well, you know, maybe just do the thought, you know, I don't want to suffer in some long end game. And, you know, he tried to keep some complications in the position. He played the queen back to f6, but this was a mistake. And Nepo, has to be said, handled this phase really, really well. So this is what ne uh, Duda is going for. You know, he's looking to counterattack. But watch what happens. Rook takes f5. Obviously, if that's taken, then queen takes pawn his mate. A check. King comes back. Rook takes a2. And I really like Nepo's next move. Here, probably, Duda was thinking, well, the king is a bit exposed. I've got the rook on the seventh rank. The queen is defending. Has maybe chances to counterattack down here somewhere. You know, perhaps he thought this is my best chance. But after Nepo's next move, well, I'm afraid the writing was on the wall. I'll have a slow tea. You have a little think. White play. What would you do next? Cheers. No doubt there are. There's more than one good move here, but I like Nepo's move. Rook f7. Super solid. It's going to protect the bishop when it comes back after a check, which covers the king. And then there's always possibilities to throw in rook f8 if the circumstances are right. And because that rook is protecting the bishop on f1, it frees up this rook to move across to one of these squares. So the check did come. Bishop f1. So the rook's doing a great job just holding firm. So it means that, that the queen and the rook Basically, can't counterattack here. The king is absolutely safe. Um, White's piece is doing a brilliant job of covering the king. D4, and here we go, rook g5. So you can see that 
Rook on the seventh, just making absolutely sure there is no counterattack here. So obviously g7 is under fire now. Queen d6. Nope, Nepo doesn't want to exchange queens now. It's too late. Queen f2. Good move. Queen a3. Well, again, Duda is desperate for a queen exchange. And if rook takes pawn, then black exchanges queens. And there's still a bit of work to do. But no, Nepo doesn't want that. He played rook g3, preventing queen e3, attacking the queen. And Duda had had enough. He resigned. Well, let's have a look. If the queen moves, or let's say d3, stopping the attack, then rook takes g7. With an unstoppable threat of rook g8, and so on. And white gets through to the king. Well... What a, a logical um, strategy from uh, Nepo, just carried through remorselessly. You know, it started way back here in this position. And you can see he's got his poor majority and they just carried, carried on, just went all the way through. And at the end, yep. Black's king was at the end of uh, you know white's pieces once those pawns had broken up the position. Excellent game from Jan Nipomnishi. Very smooth, very powerful. You know he is on excellent form. Now could he stretch his lead over Fabiano Caruana? Caruana had black against Fidus Jar, and let me find that one and show you. The critical position. Here Fidus Jar playing white. Basically Caruana is okay here. And the queen is a bit offside. Um, and you know Caruana could be better here. If uh, if Fidus Jar is not careful. So Fidus Jar decided to exchange pieces. He took here and played bishop h3. Thinking the queen... It's going to move, and then he exchanges more pieces. But he had overlooked a little tactic. F5. And here's the point. If bishop takes f5, queen e8, and black keeps the extra exchange. Of course, bishop takes rook, queen takes queen, and otherwise queen takes queen, and black is the exchange up. So after f5, well, Firuz Jar tried to complicate with e takes f5, but basically Caruana was the exchange up, and well, he converted with ease. Actually, he his Caruana's technique was superb. Finished the game beautifully in very cold-blooded fashion. Firuz Jar had no chance at all. So, uh, an, an impressive game by Caruana actually. So. Uh, the other two games were drawn. Uh, Nakamura tried hard against Ding, but Ding defended very well. That was drawn. Uh, Rajabov against Rapport was crazy. Um, thought Rapport was going to get through, but Rajabov um, well drew in the end, and it, R R Rajabov actually missed a chance to win. But anyway, that was drawn. So, scores. Let's have a look. Nepo in the lead still with four and a half out of six. Caruana on four. So those two are breaking away. And at the bottom, we have Fudu's Jar on two. Ding, Rajabov, Duda on two and a half. Nakamura and Rapport on three on 50%. So Nepo and Caruana are making... There's a gap forming. Really interesting. They're both on excellent form. Friday is a free day in the candidates. Don't forget, I've got a special live broadcast where I'll be interviewing Ruslan Ponomaryov and his, well, he'll be talking about his new book, which is from Ukraine with Love for Chess, um, a new publication from New in Chess. All proceeds going to Ukrainian charities. Do join us. It should be a fascinating conversation. That's 1800 hours, Central European time. Hopefully, see you then. Thank you.